Welcome to Small Practice Board Information Session number 59. In this recording, Rory O'Donnell provides Justin Purcell with up-to-date information on easements. I'd like to just uh, welcome everyone to the Small Practice Information Session. I'm here with uh, Rory O'Donnell. And uh, just as a brief introduction, Rory Connor is a former president of the Dublin Solicitors Bar Association, a former vice president of the Law Society, and he's a consultant to the Law Society's Conveyancing Committee. He set up over 60 years ago in 1961 uh, with O'Donnell Sweeney and more recently with Evershed Sutherland and recently retired in May. And O'Donnell is one of the best known property lawyers in Ireland and has been involved in some of the highest profile and most complex property transactions in the state of the last two decades. And you're described by Chambers Global as uh, one of the most respected senior figures in the Irish property, property market. And Richard Rogan describes you as a legend. So uh, I think we really are with the best today. And uh, Rory, you're going to give us a, a, a guide to easements which has some changing uh, uh, dates or, or, or changes to law coming forward. So you're very welcome and thanks very much for joining us today. If you have any questions, we'll take them on the chat and hopefully we'll get to deal with them. So Rory, okay. over to you. Okay, I'll get right down to it. Um, as you all know by now, easements is a tricky area. Um, and uh, first thing I got to do is just to talk you through the different practice notes that have issued over the last couple of years. The first of these was in June 2018, and it was an attempt to try and explain what was going to happen on the uh, 30th of November of this year. And it, it um, are you putting up this the slide on that? Uh, yeah, we'll do that right now. Justin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm not going to read it because uh, the gist of it. It, the, most of it, I got John Wiley to draft this, and most of it is what he drafted. And effectively, it explained what was going to happen next in this coming November, which was, uh, uh, which I'll talk about what we know about in that regard uh, at the end of dealing with the practice notes. Uh, and it, at the moment, it just deals with what was, is to happen, uh, which is that until the 30th of November, the old law applies. <clears throat> and in theory, from the 30th of November, uh, uh, if the law continues as it is, uh, the new system kicks in, the old one is gone. And that practice note, uh, I've been asked about it a few times by people who uh, have uh, when I reminded them that it was there, they said, "Well, they needed to sh should be reissuing it so that people could uh, uh, be reminded about it again." However, uh, I think at the end I'll explain that hopefully that might not be what's going to happen. So the second practice note is about rights away in rural areas, and this. Um, as you all know, the big problem that it has caused the, the, the 09 Act insofar as easements is concerned is this whole question of having to register, uh, get a court order or get it registered through the PRA. And uh, this was a practice note, which is rights away in rural areas. And it just drew attention to the fact that under the Land Law Ireland Act of 1896, uh, there was a statutory uh, provision for any properties that were vested on, under the, by the Land Commission uh, had a right of way. Uh, and the problem with that is, of course, getting access to the documentation. Now, the, the odd thing about it is that if you apply to the PRA uh, for a um, uh, under the 49A procedure for a prescriptive easement, they are able to check and see if in fact there was a vesting order and if in fact you already had a right of way and didn't need to get one under the 49A procedure. But 
uh, we don't have good access, the profession don't have good access to the Land Commission documentation. And unless you're lucky enough to have uh, the, a copy of the vesting order, uh, you won't be able to get it. I mean, the Land Commission documentation, there's a vast amount of documentation, thousands of documents, and they're all in a warehouse somewhere, I think, in Port Leash. Um, but we can't get at it and we can't find any way of getting the profession access to it. However, it is a possible solution if you were able to show uh, where uh, the vesting order was made and uh, it's, it's worth looking at in any situation uh, if you're stuck. The next uh, practice note is about implied easements and this situation applies to uh, in my, to my knowledge, to a lot, quite a lot of areas in Dublin. It applies in practically every country town and every city in Ireland, uh, where there are uh, drains running along a number of houses uh, uh, and then exiting to the main drains and to the street. And uh, this practice note was uh, drafted to try to <coughs> It encouraged solicitors to recognize that easements were implied here. And one of the good things about implied easements is that they're not registrable. So therefore you can't be forced to register them. Uh, and if houses are built, whether it's a hundred years ago and the drains are laid along the back or the front of the houses, uh, then there's, an easement of common intent, and it should be possible to regard that as an implied easement. And uh, therefore, the profession have taken the view that in the past, that these should be regarded. For example, when I started in practice uh, in Dublin, which was in July, 1961, uh, New houses were almost all sold by way of lease uh, and none of the leases contained rights of way or grants of easement and the profession regarded them, them as implicit. Now, the other point about housing estates then and until Irish Water came on the scene, uh, in most housing estates in Dublin and I think in a lot of other places, uh, every six or eight houses are grouped uh, and the drains run down the back or front of the houses and then go out to the main drains in the footpath. And <clears throat> since about the mid seventies, the practice has been to include rights away in leases and then later in deeds. And most of these uh, deal satisfactorily enough with easements, but not all of them did. And I mean, <clears throat> I certainly have had problems that, that I was very dissatisfied with the wording where uh, you were buying, let's say, a, a new house in a housing estate and the uh, solicitors acting for the developers just weren't prepared to even entertain any discussion about things that were missing. Uh, in the end, you had to take a view that to rely on the fact that it was implicit, but it's very unsatisfactory situation. Um, so. That practice note, I think I've been told by people that it was very helpful in a lot of situations where people were getting uh, very excited about um, the um, whether they needed to register, um, get a deed of grant of right or get a court order, go to the PRA, and there's no need. So the next one is... Uh, the registration of prescriptive easements under section 49A. And <clears throat> that one, I imagine most of you would have looked at it because a lot of people have had unsatisfactory experience with the PRA in relation to section 49A applications. Uh, the form, the problem is the form 68, which has, uh, it asks uh, the applicant who's swearing the application to confirm that uh, they don't have, uh, I'll just find the wording here. Um, 
must establish, okay, um, it's not an, an easement of necessity, uh, is the principal objection. Now, there's absolutely no reason why it couldn't be an easement of necessity and also prescriptive easement. Uh, we submitted a very detailed uh, submission to the PRA on the 3rd of March last, uh, having had a meeting with them the previous um, month or so before, and pointed out the flaws in their reasoning and why this form should be changed. And we've never had any proper answer, um, which is very unsatisfactory. Uh, the problem for solicitors is if you make an application and somebody says, well, no, they, they, they just have a prescriptive easement. It's not a right-of-way necessity. If it actually is thrown out, and a lot of them are thrown out, uh, and you then later apply for a court order, uh, there's always the risk that the, the, the fact that an application was made where the person swore that he didn't have a right-of-way necessity uh, will be dragged up and confronted uh, and it could be the only way of saving the um, rights. So it's a completely unsatisfactory situation. Um, and I don't know why the PRA haven't uh, uh, listened to what we've said, because they're putting themselves at risk, I would say, of <clears throat> a, a potential action against them by a person who is forced to, to disclaim a right which they had in order to, to, because they are only concerned and can only register prescriptive rights away. They, they can't do anything about somebody who has a right away necessity, which may very well be an implied right. So I move on then to um, the next one, which is the registration of prescriptive easements over land or foreshore. Now this was in March last, this was published. And the concern with it is that uh, do the periods run from the 1st of December, which would mean with foreshore now 60 years, uh, is it 2069 before a person has a right of way for foreshore, uh, even if somebody had been using it for 60 years before the act. And that just doesn't seem right. Um, and that practice note is useful, particularly for anybody who has a right of way uh, over state land or foreshore, and it would be a serious problem. Um, so I'll move on then to where we are. Um, they, I think in the last year I've had uh, and a, a group on the conveyancing committee uh, led by Paddy Sweetman, um, have been working on this with a, a team, have been working on it uh, to try and get something done that would help the profession. We <coughs> drafted a practice note <coughs> and in, in the reality is that when we had it analysed for us, uh, the advice was that legally what we were trying to say just wouldn't stand up, that they're the only way in which you can get a right away, assuming everything proceeds from um, the, um, on the 30th of November, if nothing happens before the 30th of November, uh, the only way of getting a prescriptive easement is going to be with a court order or through the PRA registration. Uh, and the, the idea of there being an equitable right, having established user just to, to, won't wash. Um, so we had concentrated on trying to get the Law Reform Commission have added uh, a look at this because they have become aware that it's uh, a, an issue uh, for practitioners and it's causing difficulty, not just for they, let's say most of the ones that people talk about are rural houses which are accessed along a laneway with perhaps even as many as 14 different owners. Uh, but um, there, it, it applies in all, a, a lot of other situations. Um, and uh, 
the reality is that uh, it just, uh, this was a mistake. Um, so we made a submission, a detailed submission to the department. <clears throat> we tried to get everyone that we could to support it. The bar uh, and Peter Bland SC, who's uh, an expert in this area, was very supportive. Um, and he um, let her regards this as having been just a terrible mistake, which I think is correct. Um, so there was a, a big meeting by Zoom with our team, um, which with the department, the AG's office and a whole series of government departments, uh, including the AG's office. Um, and uh, the upshot of it was that they wanted us to put in a submission and uh, they went as far as to say that they are going to deal with this before the 30th of November. Now, what they're going to do, we don't know. One thing they could do is kick the can down the road, which has problems. It's not as simple as all that, uh, because by the 30th of November, people could have acquired rights under the exist under the 09 Act. The 12 years would be up and somebody could be entitled to it. So they would be affected. Um, what we have asked uh, the government to do is to repeal the whole lot, just repeal the whole section dealing with easements. Now there's good things in it, but the problem was this is a very complicated area. It always has been a complicated area. And the textbooks um, confirm that, the case law confirms it, and fiddling with it, and certainly the idea of getting changes made in a short space of time uh, was just not realistic. So we've asked them just scrub it. We've invited them to form a working party to look at this area. We suggested it should be headed by Mary Lafay, who is, uh, let's say, a leading, well, apart from being a retired judge, she was one of the top conveyancing council uh, in the country for years. Uh, and she really understands the area better than anyone uh, apart from a handful of people. Um, we have offered to that the profession would and our committee would do anything they could to help. The bars have made a similar commitment. And we're hopeful that there'll be an announcement on what they're going to do, but we have a commitment that they're going to do something. Um, hopefully scrub it and we start again. Um, and um, that is, I suppose, what, uh, as much as I can say about it. Um, and um, I really am happy to deal with any questions you can put to me now. Thank you very much, Rory. Uh, so we'll be sending out a recording of, uh, of your talk later in the week on, on Friday with the, uh, access to the links. The links are also up on the chat. So just a couple of the questions and anyone who wants to ask a question, just put it in on the chat there and we'll hopefully get to it. Uh, is the first floor of a building, if the first floor of a building protrudes into the airspace of a neighbouring title, is it necessary to register this right as an easement? Uh, I think the... the <laughs> the answer really is that <clears throat> it, if it's an implied easement, no. Um, and uh, if it's based, uh, it, it would be more likely to be an implied easement. Uh, there are often, in housing estates, there's supposedly uh, detached houses. You often have overhanging eaves or gutters or something like that. So there's nothing unusual about overhanging. Um, I don't think they, they uh, it's obviously it's a matter of opinion. In my view, it's not. Now, part of a building overhanging is just a little bit more critical than uh, gutters, which one can always do something about gutters if you had to. Um, so 
I'm not sure that everyone would necessarily agree with my answer to that. So the, the second question there is, what is the definition of an easement or right away of necessity? Can you see those questions, Rory? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can see it. Well, the, the, the definition, uh, I mean, I, like in legal definitions, uh, the, the rights away and necessity are tricky. Um, they, at its simplest, if somebody sells a property uh, to another part of a holding to another person, and the only way into it is through the property retained, that would be a right away necessity. That would be at its most basic. But it's complicated and it's not easy to rely on. Okay. So there's another question there that just has come in there now. So if anyone would like to ask us a question, if you could just uh, stick it up there in the chat. Can you see that from uh, Samantha or right away in a rural area? Is it sufficient? Um, well, normally when the Land Commission vested property, they vested the roads, uh, half the roads to the land on either sides when they, when they subdivided. Uh, in most of the ones I've looked at, that's the way it's done. Um, um, if you can show that the, ro the road, uh, well, I think you would have to get the vesting order. The vesting order will show whether it was actually included right away or not. Okay. Is that so the question there from Alison then, if you have a right away over a laneway and nobody knows who owns it? Well, that's, that's, you... I mean, that's one of the serious problems. I mean, it's, it's, th this whole thing just was a mistake. I mean, to me, I don't know what they were thinking of. Now, you could say, what were we doing about it? But I mean, that act, the bill was uh, a very substantial bill. And while I looked at bits of it, I, I didn't actually know this had happened until I attended the first seminar that was run on it. And to tell you the truth, I was sort of appalled. Now, I hadn't even then realized just how much trouble it would cause, but everyone knows the trouble it would cause now. Uh, it has caused, I mean, that it has interfered with transactions, particularly uh, rural ones, I think, uh, the ones I've heard of, where people have 14 different owners, uh, some maybe some commonage, can't establish who's the owner. That's just not unusual. Uh, and it just is a, a nightmare. And I mean, we just, if, if any of you still know how to pray, I, I would suggest <coughs> that they start to pray that the department listen to our submission and we go back to square one where you can rely on a declaration. There's, there's a question there from Donna. Is the land registry procedure uh, to register a prescriptive easement abolished after the 30th of November and is a court order then necessary? Uh, no, it's not abolished. Uh, it would continue. If nothing happens, it would continue. Uh, <coughs> the only difference is that up to now, the PRA procedure is based on the old law because the new law hasn't kicked in, wouldn't kick in until the 30th of November. Um, and uh, it, the, then it would be 12 years uh, ending on 30th of uh, November of this year. So uh, it, would, it would definitely continue. Um, now, on the other hand, if we get what we ask for, uh, it'll become irrelevant because <coughs> you won't need to register and there'll be no justification for banks insisting on registration. What would the timing be for you finding out or uh, the, the profession finding out that, that your recommendations have been adopted, do you think? No idea, really. I mean, it, it, there's not much time. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we, I would be optimistic they're going to do more than just kick it down the road. I mean, kicking it down the road is what you would expect a civil servant to do uh, because it sounds easy. But there are actually, we have pointed out, it actually isn't simple. Uh, because it, it will mean if that happened, you would have one set of rights to a right away up to 1st of December 2009, another set between the 1st of December 2009 and the 30th of November of this year, and then you would have the new law applying. And that, I mean, this whole area is so chaotic anyway, 
the idea of having three lots of rights is just, uh, it's just not, I try not to think it could happen. Uh, so I hope they won't, do, they won't do that. Okay, so there's a question there from Patrick. Uh, Hi Rory, can I take it that a claimed prescriptive right to light over land or premises must be registered in the same way, protectively, even if it's not being relied upon? Uh, well, easement right to light over land or premises must be registered. Uh, I actually don't think there's ever been any application for a right to light. Uh, and I think um, it, it just didn't seem to get taken into account by the Act. Uh, and I mean, uh, rights to support and rights to light. <coughs> Excuse me. So if it were, we're just uh, reaching the last sort of four, four or five minutes. And so if anyone has the last few questions, uh, we'll take them now. So, sorry. sorry. Um, uh, I think they, uh, for the moment, would I suggest if somebody tried to register a right to light at the moment, I would say no, uh, but in the end of the day, it depends on the circumstances and the importance. But, uh, I mean, <clears throat> rights to light are tricky enough too. Um, and, um, but I, I'm not aware and I haven't come across any case where there was a right to light registered. And I think I did check with the PRA and that there had been, there might have been one application, but I don't think it went anywhere. Uh, uh, so we don't know really. Um, okay. So Maureen one. has a question there around a registered plot with the knowledge that there's a right of way registered over the plot. Does it have to be expressly provided for in the purchase deed as the right has not been exercised, the purchaser would intend to make an application of abandonment in the PRA at a future date? I would think no. I mean, if you buy <coughs> registered land and there's a right of way uh, on the folio, which it must be, I suppose. Uh, and uh, well, of course, if, if we get what we've asked for the 12 years uh, abandonment uh, may be gone as well. Now, it's one of the things that actually wouldn't be a bad thing to have, as where Section 40, I think, would have been good as well. But the catch is, if we ask them to fiddle with it, you couldn't do it safely in the time. So we went for some sort of um, surgical swipe with a meat cleaver. And uh, Rory, you, you, you've been a fountain of information. Uh, a lot of people are saying uh, thanks very much for the informative session. So unless anybody has a, any additional questions, our next session is uh, uh, for, uh, next week at Wednesday at one o'clock, uh, uh, an ANL update, um, and then the Future Diploma Centre and the Mental Health and then Ethics and Practice. And you can see the list there. I won't go through them all, but uh, just in case you want to want to come along to some of these other sessions. So Rory, you unless there's, oh, there's a few other questions. Oh, there's, thank you, Rory, thank you, Rory. Um, here's another, just last question. We're noting that the Conveyancing Committee submission to the Department of Justice is available on the Law Society committee pages, web pages. If it's abandoned, then are we back to the declarations of user? Yes, um, yes. yes, we are, yeah. Thank you, and we're very glad to, <clears throat> for most people anyway. Uh, thank you, fingers crossed, Frank Joyce. So, <laughs> That's a good one, yes, I agree. <laughs> And I think you would all cross your fingers if, or pray, whichever is easiest. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for okay. joining us today. Thank you, Rory, for, for giving us your, your, your experts' advice and opinion. And hopefully we'll see you all uh, next week. I'll send out a recording on Wednesday afternoon with uh, links uh, to the easements and the practice notes as, as we talked today. Thank you very much, Rory. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Slán agus